My name is Colin Latcham and I'm the chairman of the Western Suburbs Alliance and this is an organisation which was created uh, only a few months ago, uh, forming an alliance between various community groups who were alarmed about uh, high-rise development and the imposition on their councils and on their communities of undesirable developments. A group that represents grassroots views of a lot of people and people with profile as, as well as uh, residents and ratepayers in those the western suburbs. You're not looking at people that have radical politics that are Greens, Labor or left of centre. They're people that are traditionally conservative voters, would generally vote Liberal, but they're now saying enough is enough in the western suburbs. In Netherlands, in Cottesloe, in Churchlands, they all want to see a big change and get rid of the existing members of parliament. We set ourselves up basically to get a coalition of like-minded people. And within our group, there's a lot of professional expertise, planners, engineers, lawyers, and uh, so on. But basically, we set out to inform the public about what was happening, and also to gain their feedback on what they would like us to do about it. I think the conflict between Cottesloe Council and Mr Barnett has been running high for uh, the best part of 10 years. Having one metro beach that isn't um, overshadowed with high-rise buildings, it's not a bad thing. When uh, Colin Barnett came to office in 2008, the state debt, the net state debt was 3.6 billion. It's now 14 billion. Now that's an increase of 300% in just three years. Not all of that money um, has been spent on worthwhile projects. Like, for instance, it's not even spent yet, but this inlet here is going to cost, uh, well, in 2009 dollar terms, 440 million. By the time it's finished, it would have to be close to a billion dollars, or well and truly. So that billion dollars, we could have spent it on a light rail through the, through the city, as has been envisaged, from the university back into the city. The state government needs to be targeting and changing its priorities and, and spending money now on projects which, which will help and benefit people right throughout the metropolitan area. Probably the bigger carrot that Mr Barnett is chasing is that he wants to abolish councils. And by abolishing councils, he gets the, all those assets, those community assets, revest back into the state. And going back 30 years ago, when the old city of Perth, um, which was much bigger, Mr Barnett, as the then executive for the Chamber of Commerce and Industry, um, was the, um, the first person to document a plan to the old city of Perth to break it up into smaller councils. The greater metropolitan area is going to be much worse off when they wake up to find out that Mr Barnett just hasn't given them a new council, but his um, run off with a lot of their community assets um, and applied them to state purposes rather than local community purposes. People are just very angry and very alienated by the government's uh, new planning laws that they brought in in 2010, 2011. They are absolutely draconian. I mean, for example, when you take this development and some of the other developments that are in contention at the moment, they are no longer in the hands of the council or local community. They actually go into something called development assessment panels or DAPs. Now, the way those have been set up, one might almost say that they've been deliberately set up to marginalise the councils and the community because you have three uh, government-appointed paid assessors and only two councillors. If you do the sums, uh, three against two, and that's the way they work, is never, going to, is never going to get a decision for the community. The community's voice is lost. And it's just a subterfuge to let people think that there's a community voice or well, there isn't at all. If in fact they reject the developer's proposals, the developers have the right of appeal. If they accept the developer's proposals, the local councils have no right of appeal. Now one has to say, that's why we're fighting for local democracy. That, that's what we're trying to do. Under his development assessment panels, this is gonna to lead to massive corruption to dwarf WA Inc. Um, it's these kind of problems that um, are going to be looming very large in the next term unless we ensure that Mr Barnett is not re-elected. We are hoping that uh, two Liberal or four, li four independent candidates, um, Kevin Morgan, the Mayor of Cottesloe, is nominating for the seat of 
at Cottesloe as well. Max Hipkins, the Mayor of Nedlands, is nominating for the seat of Nedlands in opposition to Bill Marmion, the uh, Minister for Environment. And Wayne Monks is nominating for Churchlands uh, to fill the seat vacated by uh, Elizabeth Constable. Greg Ross is not associated with Western Suburbs Alliance, but he uh, is got his own plans in place to uh, oppose John Day. And Mr Barnett has a different constituency than I have in that his constituency is largely drawn from his um, liberal donation base, which is very corporate. My constituency is far more grassroots. Um, I don't have the um, campaign donations to influence me. Um, instead, I just have the ballot box, the grassroots constituency of the community. And it seems to be that clash between community and big business that is probably at the heart of that dispute. There's no real um, voice of opposition these days. I think Labor's lost their traditional constituency over the last couple of decades. Um, and I think they're sipping from the same cup as the Liberals in terms of chasing the corporate donations. And that's, you know, on the basis that um, he who pays the piper calls the tune, um, they're basically singing from the same song sheet, slight variations on the same tune. true that we're plotting, although you could say that uh, we have similar concerns about not being listened to. Uh, that particularly relates to uh, the loss of, of town planning powers that uh, local government once had and under the present government we've almost completely lost. Uh, with the introduction of the development assessment panels where the majority of the, um, the panel is appointed by the Minister for Planning, uh, local governments have been overridden in what they'd like the outcome to be of uh, many development applications. Because of what's been done on the Perth waterfront, uh, there is uh, someone standing against the Minister for Planning in Kalamunda. So yes, I think it, it, it is a velvet revolution and it is spreading. Um, it's not just the Western suburbs, there's a lot of people with the same views who, who live around uh, West Australia in other, other local governments as well. So. Um, I support the Western Suburbs Alliance because they're against the, the uh, draconian autocratic stake planning laws, the, um, including the development assessment panels and the Metropolitan Region Authority. What we, we've got to get across to people, and I think this is very serious, is you might say, look, this is nimbyism. This is people in the privileged Western suburbs who don't want things built in their backyard. The point that we're trying to get over is, in fact, there really isn't a street, there isn't a park, there isn't any open land in the metropolitan area so on, which is now safe from the developers. See this as a revolution in terms of individuals starting to wake up and recognise that they need their state politicians, federal politicians, local politicians to represent communities of people, not corporations, not unions, but people.